All right, we got our hood hinge spacers here. Now, I want the hood to actually hinge up top instead of at the bottom, so I'm gonna put this here instead of on the hood. That way it'll hinge right here instead of it hinging like down here and having a block. Now, we are gonna have a gap there, but I do have plans for that, so we'll just have to see how that goes later because I don't have in what I was gonna put there I did go ahead and pull out the bumper. Now I need to get that sanded so I can get it painted. I also would like to put a winch behind here. So I either need to order a winch plate or make up my own winch plate. But I can do that after I get the hood on and know all my spacings with that. So these are loose right now. I need them loose because once we put the hood on, we will probably need to adjust these a little bit. This top piece can slide left and right. And down here, they're slotted and that piece to slide forward and back on the hood. So once we have the hood in place and we put the pin in, we can go ahead and tighten all that down. That way it's permanently located there and no wiggling around. I do have the little retainer that we have a bar that basically holds up the hood once it's tilted forward. I'll go ahead and put that on. Now it is supposed to bolt on the outside of those kind of side plates, rock guard plates that are on the side. I don't have those on there yet. I have them sitting over in the corner but they still need to be sanded down and painted and everything. So we're just gonna leave them off for now until we get that all sanded and painted, and then we'll put them on. But I'm ready to get this hood on here. So once I actually get some help, we'll go ahead and lift it on there and try to position it where it's supposed to go and get everything tightened down. I also went ahead and got the hood out of storage and rinsed it off with the hose. Worked pretty well, just put a little sprayer on the hose and just hose it down and a lot of the dust and stuff came right off. So one thing I did notice are little carriage bolts down here, maybe a little bit too long. They stick out maybe about a half inch past the nut on the other side. I may need to trim those up just a little bit so that they clear a little bit better on our radiator stack. Now, whenever I lift this up there, I'll probably go ahead and put like a moving blanket or something on top of the engine. And then that way this can set down uh, without scratching things up or if I do have any clearance issues, I can modify some stuff later, but I don't want to damage things when we're just putting it up there. Well, there's another thing down. We got the little doghouse cover here painted up. So I used the aerosol can version of the Raptor liner on the doghouse cover. I had a little bit left over, so I went ahead and did one initial coat on the bumper here. We are gonna have to do another coat. It's not covered quite all the way, but it's looking good. Also have our little chain for our tailgate holder. I'm painting this with kind of a rust inhibitor and everything. I'll get it painted black, and then I actually have a cover that I'm going to put over the whole thing. Kind of like what came on it, but I only had one, so I ended up ordering something a little bit different, but it'll definitely work for what we need. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the thermal barrier on the inside of the doghouse cover. Now, I got this, it's called a thermal guard, and it is actually good up to radiant heat of 2,000 degrees. Now, let me see if I can get this out of here. So this does have the shiny side and the insulation side here. So we're going to actually stick this insulation side on the inside of our doghouse cover there with the shiny side out. Now once I do that, I'll come back over it with that other insulation thin stick on shiny stuff. That stuff is good up to over 2000 degrees as well. So we'll end up putting that first layer on and then we'll put the second layer on. That second layer will probably allow us to get all the way up to the edge a lot better than with this stuff because this stuff's a little thicker. So that's not actually like metallic or whatever, that's just a shiny coat from a high temperature clear coat that I put on the back of this. It may not look the best, but it'll definitely function for what we're needing. Well, since we're fixing up so much stuff on this anyway, we're going to go ahead and replace the headlights. Now these were from the 24 volt system. They worked fine for that, but well, if they were for 24 volt and we go to 12 volt, they're just really not going to be bright enough. So, we're going to go with a set of these. Now, these are DOT SAE approved, and I'm using little adapters in order to go from that style plug to what we have on the Humvee. Now, there is a few companies now, I believe, that are making these. I don't remember which company I got these from, but if I have an issue, I'll let y'all know. But they look like they're well made, so I think they'll do just fine. Now with these headlights, they're not particularly made for the Humvee. So I am hoping we have clearance on everything, but it may depend. I may end up having to take off a fin or two or something in order to get this to fit in there right. But I'm not too worried about that. That's not, that wouldn't be too hard to do. 
So first thing first, I need to get the old one out of there and then we'll put the new one in. Well, there we go. I actually got them on. They didn't actually require any modification on there. So they just kind of fit in, slip in place. Now I did follow the directions. I looked up, I did look at the plug. So this will tell you which one's high beam, low beam, negative. And then just basically look at your numbers for which ones are high beam and low beam. And then you just plug them in and put the face back on it and you're good to go. Now I haven't turned them on to do all the adjustments or anything. So I may have to adjust it up or down or left or right, but I'll need to do that a little bit later. Not quite ready for that yet. Mid nineties yesterday and a high today in the mid sixties. So we definitely have a front coming in. So I will be moving this into the shop, but I actually got out here last night when it was dark with a little flashlight, trying to finish up all the wiring on all the lights. So let's check them out. Side marker light working there. Yep. Well, crap. Headlights are on. Of course, it's during the day, so it's not very bright. Well, crap. Well, there's another one that's not working. That one's working. Well, that one's not working. At least that side marker light's working too. So it looks like we got some. Uh, looks like we got some issues to go through here. Well, I definitely have some wiring I need to go through now. Figure out what's going on here. I need to figure out how I'm going to do the mirrors. Now I'm thinking about doing the mirrors that I got actually on the doors. Now I was going to try to put them on the A pillar here, but what I've ran into with doing that is the driver's side here is usually okay with being able to see out the window, but because those windows are kind of square and they don't actually open up a whole lot on that other side. You either have to have the passenger mirror sticking out far enough this way that it actually, when you open the door, you can't open it that far. Or you do actually have to have like the trucker style mirrors where they actually kind of can swing up front and you look through the windshield for that side. But if I do the mirrors on the doors, I can basically have them to where they stick right out there to where we can see them just fine. So I'm probably gonna do those types of mirrors on the doors and then I'll get a separate set of mirrors that either kind of like the Jeep mirrors when you take the doors off, they slide into the hinge and tighten down there. Or I'll go with what I kind of did before and put our little mount here and just hang a temporary mirror off the side. Well, I think it's starting to sprinkle. So I think it's a good time to get this back into the shop before we really have to deal with any electrical or stuff in the rain. All right, so I got the Humvee back in the shop now. I have a little lead running from directly from the battery. I'm gonna test a few of the connections and basically just make sure I have a good ground to a good ground. And then I will use this little lead in order to test some of the connections, some of the plugs on those wires to see if I can get it to light up. If it doesn't light up, then I probably have something internally wrong with it. Now, whenever I redid these lights, they were old lights. You could tell that there had been some humidity in them before uh, causing some corrosion and stuff. I tried to clean it up as much as possible. So what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and disconnect some of the plugs I'd already plugged in back there. And then we'll use the little test lead here to test all the lights on it. See if they work. If they do work, then I have some issues with my wiring somewhere. Something's not getting a good ground or something. Anyway, here we go. All right, I made some grounding straps like this. So it's basically just a heavy sized wire with two ends on it. These are what I put on the back side back there to ground from one bolt to another. I put it on the other side as well, even though that side was working. Up front on our marker light here. Now I did actually have a wire that was broken on that last light. So I went ahead and rewired that with a new LED housing bulb thing. This was the side that worked, the other side didn't. Now on the front, I actually did have the little grounding strap across there, but what I ended up finding out is over there, on the inside, there was a little corrosion where the plug plugs in for the grounding strap. So I went ahead and cleaned that off and then plug it back in. So now it's time to test them out. Let me squeeze by here. I don't know why I parked so close to this edge. And clip, clip. Yep, side marker light working. That one's working. The headlights are working. That side's working. Side marker light working. 
this side marker light's working. This was the side that wasn't working on our tail light. It's working now. That side's working as well, and the side marker light over there is working also. I just don't feel like walking all the way around there just to show y'all. Well, I haven't aimed the headlights yet, but it looks like they're almost right. Nah, well, that right side's a little bit lower than the left side, so I'll have to raise or lower one side. Well, let's take a look at them on bright also. Yeah, the right side is definitely lower. It needs to come up some. See, told you side marker light was working. And we got the temporary mirrors out and clean them up a little bit. They're almost ready for paint. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take that apart there and then paint it so it paints a little bit easier. I'm just gonna go with the simple black paint for now. And these are just gonna be temporary and maybe used whenever I actually take the doors off, just hang them up there. So I have these little mirror mounts here and this is for a different kit. I believe it's for a Jeep, but I'm going to try to use this modify it up a little bit in order to possibly mount up on the kind of this triangular part there right now it kind of hits stuff and it needs to be moved a little bit but that's definitely something that we can handle so whenever i was going over what i need to do for the doors in order to get these painted i think i'm actually just going to go ahead and kind of strip them down a little bit and actually just take this in to a body shop place in order for them to just go ahead and strip it, sand it down, get it ready for paint. The way I'd want them to do it is just to go ahead and do black paint on the inside, paint the hinges black as well, the handle, and then basically just do a nice primer on the outside here. And whenever I get them back, I'll go ahead and tape it off and spray this side with our bed liner stuff so it'll match the body. Now I'm not really afraid of doing body work and stuff myself, a lot of sanding but I don't have a whole lot of time before it gets too cold to spray this bed liner. So I'd rather go ahead and get it to a body shop, somebody that can actually get this done pretty quick, get it back to me, I can get it painted and let it set up for a couple of weeks before I put it on. That way all that bed liner will cure up nice. And then also they'll do a lot better job at painting the hinges and everything black than I can. They have access to a lot more tools and better tools to get this ready for paint and actually painted with the right stuff. So I'm probably just going to opt in and sending these to a body shop. It's not me cheaping out or anything. I'm just under a time crunch before the cold gets here. Well, there we have it guys. A little bit more done and a little bit closer to getting this thing back on the road. Now I know this episode was a little all over the place with little things, but that's kind of all we have left. We don't have any major thing that's going to take our attention for that long. And so we kind of jump around from piece to piece trying to get things done. Now our seal for our doghouse cover is supposed to be in sometime this week. So I'll get that installed and show you all next episode as well. That'll be one step closer as well to getting this thing inspected and driving on the road again. I hope you all like this episode, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you all next time.